And um, based on your experience so far, uh, what attributes or characteristics do you think would make a great PA student? Like, who is someone who would excel in the master's PA program? There's a lot of different things that I've noticed in different people and in myself that I think have helped and things that haven't. So I think being able to not have, being okay with out structure. So in undergrad, you have your lectures and they tell you what you need to know. This is what you need to know, go home and study it. In PA school, it's not like that. It's more, this, this is the topic you need to know about go and learn about the topic. I'm not giving you the content, I'm giving you the topic, go learn about it. And you have to be okay with that. Um, and it's definitely a transition of putting all of your learning into your own hands, um, not having lectures to rely on, which is your own, own notes completely. Um, that, that kind of takes a, a certain type of person to kind of accept that responsibility and accept that stress. So, so I think stress is also another thing. If Obviously, if you handle stress in any situation, you'll do better if you handle it well. So I think, um, especially in the PA program, when you have the stress of you know, knowing the content, but knowing it enough that you can use it. Because we're not learning this content for just to do well on a test, we're learning it to help people one day. So that, that stress is also from doing well on tests, but also like, do I know this when I'm in clinic? Like when a, when a physician asks me, so what do you do for the patient? Like, do I know it? Because there's a real person in that room and um, what you know can change their outcome. So there's that stress and there's also the stress of um, being an advocate for a PA because a lot of people don't know what a PA is and you have to explain that a lot of times. Your elevator speech becomes pristine after like a couple months of being a PA and um, you have to be okay with advocating for something that people don't know about, people question, people um, sometimes underappreciate or they, they just don't know enough because it's not talked about. So you have to be okay with being that a voice. Um, and sometimes that can be stressful, but sometimes you know, it becomes a joy. Or you will, I, I enjoy advocating for it, but I do feel you know, when there's seven people around me and they all don't know what a PA is, and I have to explain it to all of them, and it's like the fourth time I've done it, it, it can kind of take a, a little bit of a toll. Other than that, um, I think versatility is definitely something that helps being able to jump from one specialty to it to another really quickly because we spend about a month and a half to a month to maybe two months on on each unit so you're doing you know cardiology for a month and a half and you're switching right to respiratory then you're the other way around but or then you're going to hematology and you're kind of very going through content very quickly and you have to be okay with that that you're not spending like a whole week on one disease you're spending like a few days on it and you're moving on and then at the end you're kind of amalgamating everything into this clinical picture or clinical understanding so um, being able to critically think and use problem solving is definitely a good skill to have because the tests aren't just multiple choice recognition just like memorization it's like here's another problem solve the problem so you have to be able to think outside the box you have to be able to apply the content you've learned to a very novel situation um, novel patient so having that skill is or having practiced that skill at all in your undergrad is definitely helpful um, and yeah I think also being naturally good at communicating is, I think, huge. Um, obviously, you can work on it, but there, there's a certain factor that kind of you just, some people have and some people don't. And I don't want to like, discourage anyone, but I think you can work on it. But like what I've noticed is that everyone in the program that I've seen just has a certain way about them, a certain presentation when they talk to patients, and they just know how to talk to them. They know how to show genuine empathy um, to someone who's going through something hard. And they can take it seriously. Even though when they know it's not a real patient, they still feel for them because they know that like, this could be one day. So being able to do that, being able to assume that role and um, relate to someone that you've never met before, that you know is, even, is just acting because they're a standardized patient, is, is another skill. Um, so if you're not good at awkward silences, is something to work on. If you're not good at... Um, 
seeing someone cry or break down in front of you, it's something to work on. Um, but being able to, to do that, to stay professional, but also empathetic, is it's a tough balance, but it, it's um, important to the, to the program. That was a phenomenal answer. Thank you. Like <laughs> Thank you. I'm like feeling it here. So. <laughs> um,